everybody, Josh the RV Nerd from Bishes RV hanging out today at my hometown Coldwater, Michigan store with a fantastic option for couples camping for folks I like to call the slide skeptics. And, that, and I don't mean that in a derogatory term. People are like, I don't want a slide out. There are some people say there's, you know, slide outs add weight, they add cost, they have extra things that you need to maintain. There's more seals, there's potentially more leak points. All of that is true and I totally respect it. This is a very well proven, very popular layout right here where instead of like a sofa and a dinette like you might find in the Jayco version of this, this one just gives you a giant wraparound rear dinette that folds down into a larger sleeper which is really awesome if you're going to use this for like buddy camping or something like that. You could have adults sleeping on opposite ends of the RV without sharing a bed and feeling weird and European about it, you know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, it also uh, has full storage below that dinette and you can always take the table out to use it like kind of a big open rear lounge if you are stuck inside for an extended time on a rainy day. First thing I would do is take the pedestal table legs out. I'd put on a set of free floating folding legs and uh, I, I would just repurpose that table and, and make it shift around more easily which I think is cool. They've improved the factory standard solar. You've got tankless on demand water heater now. Obviously a full facelift inside and out and I think in this little floor plan, lightening and brightening it up really opened it up. But it's not without its little fault points. We're going to look at some of those along with some of the other good qualities of this RV as we go. And if you appreciate that more fair approach, hit that subscribe button and let's get in there. And I, and I think maybe in this floor plan more than any of their others, the lighten and brighten wood tones that they're using in here. Last year they had this it wasn't technically black, but if you called it black, I wasn't going to argue with you. Like, just an extremely dark espresso. And in a lot of floor plans, it did look kind of upscale and fancy and rich. And it had really good color contrast with everything else. But I like how they said, you know, let's just soften it up. Let's just go a little bit warm and natural. And, and that's what we're looking at here. And this, it speaks to me pretty nicely. I really like this. Now, one other thing that's really nice is right over here, right next to the entry door, which... By the way, if I back up a little bit, one of the things this floor plan does very well that I don't think it gets a lot of credit for is the fact that it has amazing campsite window covers. There's four windows overlooking the campsite here, plus, of course, that giant picture window uh, on the back and some other windows over on the poop side of the RV. But up top here, you've got their uh, LCI-1 control, or as Cherokee calls it, total control. Um... I believe it was Prince that had a song that sounded something like that, but never mind all that noise right there. Being a stick and tin camper, it's much, much easier for them to put outlets in the walls, and they exploit that in this. They're also using that nicer uh, sealed edge thermal foil stuff all the way through the RV. Still, the reason I mention that is there's still some brands doing it, say like only in the, um, you know, in the kitchen, but not everywhere else. Now it's carpetless, it's ventless, uh, which, you know, no slides doesn't really need to have any carpet anywhere, so that's easy and it's organic. Again, the first thing I would do is I would, uh, I'd get rid of those pedestal post legs, and, uh, I'd post Malone those things, and I'd get rid of those, and I'd swap that out. I'd keep the tabletop. You can reuse the table, but get a set of free-floating folding legs, and now you have a chair that, or a table that you can shift around in case one of you is a little bit bigger than the other, or you want to take it outside for picnic time. It's just far more multi-functional uh, that way. Um, the uh, entertainment is in kind of a funky spot over here, but I don't know that this is really a major entertainment kind of floor plan. I think this is for people who want to go camping not glamping. They want to spend their time outside for the most part. And when they're indoors, they need enough room to maybe play a game of cards or, you know, put together a puzzle or something like that. Um, now, while we're up top here, all of your Grey Wolf standard uh, have a 15,000 BTU air uh, and centralized. Still not everyone centralizes their air in this floor plan. And I get that it is basically a one room model, but non-centralized air, uh, if the AC unit is just back here, it will struggle to keep the RV cooled evenly, especially in the, uh, the hotter climates and whatnot. Now looking around here, they had some space around both sides of their rear U-dinette. You can see how there's just some extra dead space there. I think like that might be a decent place to maybe add some, uh, you know, coat hooks or something like that. Maybe a, a little back alley drunken octopus fight club up in this area right over there. Um, all the windows open for maximum airflow. And I, I think it is high time. We You see some of the, the multifunctionality and the other purposes that you can use in this area. Now, real quick, I want you to understand I have flipped you over into massively wide angle 
uh, lens mode just to be able to capture that footage. So it's a very skewed, um, you know, look at how this is going to uh, appear for you. But you get the idea. Like you can use it as a lounge. You can use it as a uh, as a sleeper. And you know, even if you don't fold it down into full sleeper mode. You could just knock the cushions off, and an adult could sleep on that rear bench alone pretty easily. So if your buddy's got to crash on your couch for a while because Aunt Rita kicked Uncle Gary out again, uh, you know, what, what'd the fool do this time? Who knows what hasn't he done? Uh, you get the idea. And, of course, there's all it's full storage below it. Now, somebody might wonder, why didn't they make the dinette the entire width of the um, of the RV itself, you know? Why does it have that extra weird little kind of box off the side? And basically, because they have a standardized U-Dinette on that. And uh, it's the same U-Dinette that they use in all the size of their other RVs. So basically, because they build their U-Dinettes one size. So they had to add the little extra box to flesh out the extra width of the RV. Now, you saw over there, nice pantry space. That's also one of those larger 12-volt DC compressor fridges. They don't use any of the 8-cubic-foot varieties. They only use the 10s and above. And you may have noticed my displeasure at the fact that these overhead cabinet doors have nothing to keep them up. I call them automatic closers, but... <laughs> Obviously, they uh, they they just they, you gotta you gotta hold them open with your head. Or I've actually seen uh, somebody use like little magnet holdbacks for that metallic handle to kind of keep that thing uh, in place. Now, did you when I sat down in this in like lounger mode, that if you choose to add a TV would put you at a pretty decent angle for it. Although, like I said, I think television entertainment is certainly more of a uh, I don't even know if I want to call it a secondary thought. It's more of an afterthought in a floor plan like this. Again, being more of a, a camper versus just a glamper. Now, looking over here in the uh, kitchen space, giving you a look at the oven. Nice spot for a wastebasket down below the drawers uh, or the sink there. That is a skirted stainless sink, by the way. I like how that kind of, you know, comes out to you. And it, it just gives it a good higher end look in, frankly, I, I think a pretty... I think we can call this starter class, but maybe smarter class. It's a little, it's an upscale starter class, if that makes any kind of sense. I think you know what I mean. Now, there's another one of these outside. There's a little black box by the skirt of the RV next to the door. But what that will do at night is, uh, technically it's doing it now. Uh, you just really can't see it, especially on camera, because the camera tries to wash out and color blend tones. But it's actually broadcasting Gray Wolf into the flooring here. Again, you probably can't see it. Now, like I said, the RV's had some good points. It's had some bad points. Like, it doesn't have a shade in the entry door. And one major thing I want to just, let's just get this done. That's a camp queen bed. That is a short queen, not a true queen. Is there room for a true queen in it? Yes. And I've actually seen trade-ins where people put a true queen in it, but you completely sacrifice all walk-around ability when you do that. It becomes like a, uh, well, like an island. You have to, like, crawl onto it here. Now, you're looking at uh, household and USB outlets on both sides of the bed, which is really nice. And somebody might ask, is this a, uh, available in Black Label Edition with the fiberglass and all the fancy upgrades and all that? And currently, no. I do think it's possible that's something that could happen in the future. Apologies. That sun being pretty unforgiving, like Clint Eastwood and Gene Hackman, as we, uh, you know go by those windows there. Now, taking a look at our bedroom storage, you can see you've got the dual hanging towers. And even though, again, it's a starter class, quote unquote RV, it still has a, uh, you know, a full overhead cabinet. Now, is there storage above, uh, below the bed? Yes. Is it separate from what's outside? Yes. Is it a backbreaker death way for mattress? Yes. Are there struts to hold the bed up? Negative. Yes. <laughs> Again, telling you what's good with what's not good. Now, over here, uh, the little hallway-style uh, bathroom that we have right next to the entry door. This is kind of helping privatize the uh, the main bathroom or the bedroom, I think, because it's sort of acting like a privacy wall. It is tight. It is tight like a tiger around that space right there. Uh, you may notice how they're using a uh, just a shallow little shower pan, but they do have a full shower surround in this, which is uh, awful nice. I also do like that they are now including a, uh, a light switch for the ceiling lights in here. And that big black box right there, that is the controller for your tankless on-demand water heater. 
It would be nice, I think, on this wall over here on the right if they had a place to hang a towel. And I discovered it was lacking when I, you know, it got hot in here with the sun beating on this thing. I took off my hat and my uh, vest over here and realized I had no place to hang anything. So, uh, it, it, like I said, would have been, would have been, would have been nice. Would have been nice. Big XL vent fan, though. That is nice. Now, something else that you're going to need to kind of consider and contend with is the headroom over here in this shower. As you can tell from my twitching eye, uh, I, I, I am glad that skylight was there because without that skylight, there is no way in H-E double hockey sticks, heckin' no way I could have stood up in that shower. I'd uh, If I'd have stood up too fast without it, I probably would have broken my little nerdy neck. Man, beautiful day today too, but first and foremost, let's talk towing. Now, here's a funny thing. Because they have bigger, heavier rated axles on this, and that gives them a higher GVW, that means technically there are fewer vehicles uh, able to tow one of these. So it's kind of a catch-22. A lot of people ask, why do manufacturers sometimes use absolutely minimum rated axles? Why do they have such crappy cargo carrying capacities? And the answer is because on paper that makes them legally safe for more vehicles and they therefore have more buyers. At the end of the day, the answer to any question as to why a manufacturer does or doesn't do is without question because that's what does or doesn't sell RVs. I hate that answer I just gave you, but the fact is that is just, it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty hard to argue with, uh, frankly. Now, taking a look down in here, uh, the RV does not have a full true pass-through compartment. It's got a big front compartment. Uh, all the water heater stuff is on the other side. And you may have noticed that improved now 30 amp instead of like 10 amp charge controller. And they've gone with a uh, an improved factory solar package this year. It's double what it used to be last year. 100 watts now instead of 50. But that 30 amp charge controller means you could expand on that as desired. Now they were flirting with the idea of going with mirrored windows. Um, and they did test run a couple build versions of it, but it does look like they've gone away from that. There was a lot of feedback saying, you know, they might kind of look cool, but good Lord, try to get the fingerprints off those things. So they did go back to a, a plain, clear, non-tinted window on these for the remainder of the season. That will supersede any Grey Wolf stuff that came out before this. Uh, still have the uh, gas grill quick connect, but they have moved said propane cookery hookery dickery dock back here. Uh, where it used to be like right up front, basically just under the front edge of the skirt line uh, of the RV. I really appreciate how they put the uh, the outside speakers down here at the level of your chesticles so that you're not blowing away the neighbors with your Freedom Rock. As we wrap our way around the back, you see the uh, Drunken Uncle Leash Latch for the four-legged furry friends has returned. You may notice a new update up top though, in that upper right corner of the rear wall, there's that black horizontal bracket. That is so that you can uh, attach one of those portable telescopic ladder kind of jobs to this thing and uh, gain access to that fully walkable roof. They've had a fully walkable roof uh, for years, but the last season or two, they actually didn't give you any allowances to put a ladder on the RV, even after market. You had to go with a totally portable standalone uh, ladder. You don't have to do that now. Obviously, you still could, you just don't have to. Now, also up top here, their factory standard uh, Bluetooth uh, rear view camera comes right with this. And basically, you're gonna hook up to this thing with the same app that you use to run the uh, primary control panel on the inside. It just integrates all into one. So one option will be like, you know, push this button to control the RV and then push this button to watch your camera. I do really like too that they're including that third tail light for safety. Because even with this folding cargo rack, if I stand back here, the cargo rack technically is already somewhat obstructing those tail lights, right? Well, they wanna make sure that People can see the fact that you're stopping so you don't end up with a Ford Ranger trying to pretend it's a toy hauler parked up in your uh, your rear lounge space, obviously. That's a bad day for everybody. Now this is like little stuff, but it's the little details that make the big differences, I think. The fact that they have both an outside hot and cold utility shower, not just a, a cold sprayer, and a full black tank flush here is really handy. And this RV does have a single uh, stink pickle depository uh, hookup station over here. There's another little look at that little tankless on-demand water heater. And short of the fact that they've given it a completely different exterior color scheme, swapping out the, uh, the gray of last year for that just polar white of this year, which I actually think if you're camping in a really hot climate, 
that will help this RV uh, maintain its temperature better than it ever used to. So um, whether it looks better or not is subjective. I do think it will function better in its current uh, variation. Now, when we first began, I mentioned how they do this like a little bit differently from like the Jayco version, or you could also say maybe a little bit differently from the East to West or the Shasta version or whatever the case may be. So what I'm going to let you do, uh, or, or what I'm going to do for you rather, and allow you to do at your own discretionary leisure, obviously I can't tell you what to do. I'm going to leave links in the video description to check for things like pricing, availability, and see what other builders make a floor plan like this. And you can decide which one kind of speaks to you the loudest. And I'd be kind of curious to know, of all the different builders of this floor plan, whether it's one I've reviewed or not, I don't care. Leave me a comment, let me know who you think does it best and why. And I'd love to hear from you. Maybe there's one I gotta get on my hit list that I've missed so far. So until next time, take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone. Bye.